Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jason from Straight Edge Knives coming at you today with another video. Today we're going over the Work Tough Gear Carnivore. This bad boy was sent over to me by Mr. Vic Lynn. Uh, he wanted me to check this out, give my honest opinion on it, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, this was designed by Eric Outer of Outer Limitless. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, Instagram, stuff like that. I'll put links to his uh, stuff down below, as well as to Work Tough Gear's page. And uh, let's get into this, right? Then comes the Kydex sheath, very well made, locks in nice and secure. Nice click, you can hear. It's not coming out. Yep, no rattle. Very, very nicely done. Comes right out. It's got a nice little thumb ramp here for you to pop out. So you put your thumb on the back of that, like so. And just pop it off. Come right out. Set that down side. Thing has a um, lanyard hole here. And it is chamfered around here. So if you put a lanyard through there, you don't have to worry about any sharp edges uh, fraying or cutting your, your uh, lanyard cord. Um, it is rounded off here on the back of the spine up to about this point. And then from there, this is 90 degrees all the way down. Um, and I should have brought my fire rod out here so I could strike some fire rods. I might pause here and do that here in a minute. Uh, it does have a fuller here that tapers down as well to help reduce a little bit of the weight. But this does not feel like a heavy knife at all. Um, and I'll, let's go over the specs real quick while, while we're talking about that. Overall, you have a 13.9 inch blade. Blade length is 8.1 inches. Cutting edge is 7 inches. Um, it is 0.23 inches thick. Um, just about a quarter inch thick. It is saber grind with a convex edge. It is SK85 steel with a Rockwell hardness of between 56 and 58. Uh, it has a satin finish. The knife weight is 18.3 ounces. With the sheath, it's 23 ounces. And uh, it comes with a tech lock clip and a kydex sheath. And uh, man, I tell you, that thing is pretty, pretty nice, man. Uh, I really enjoy this, the way it feels. I've been ha kind of handling it since I got it. Just holding my hand, playing with it a little bit, and uh, it feels awesome. Oh, these are also uh, jungle, camo, jungle Camo G10 handle scales. Um, but, man, I'll tell you what, to me it kind of looks like snake skin, which is pretty cool. Pretty awesome. It's got a nice little palm swell through here. It's a little thinned out, a little here and a little here, and then so get your hands around it. It really fills up the hand nice. I wear XL gloves, uh, like in mechanics gloves or, you know, leather gloves, and uh, you see here, I can almost touch my palm with, with these two fingers, but it's got this nice little swedge here at the bottom, so it's going to help keep your hand from sliding back, um, but yeah, I mean, this thing's got some decent weight to it. I mean, it's nice. It's light. It's got some weight, but it's light, if that makes sense. It's got some good stabbing capabilities. Yeah, I think this thing deep in there. Check that out. Let's look at this tip real quick. Yep, nope, no damage. There, let's see this. I like I like doing this. I like stabbing these phone books here. So, or not phone books, these catalogs that I have. But you can see this thing's probably uh probably about half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch thick. Let's see what kind of stab penetration we get on here. Well, that kind of went all the way through. <laughs> so there you go. You got the tip of the blade right here. Went all the way through that catalog. And I'm sitting down and I'm not able to generate a ton of force. But yep, pierced all the way through again. Ah. Look at that. All the way through again. So being able to pierce through something, eh, no problem. Say, uh, let's say you're out hiking and you fell down and you cut your leg and you got to cut your pants off. Yep, I don't think you're gonna have any problem cutting your pants off. And these are these are already kind of shredded. <laughs> that sharp right through there, no problem. One of the other things I like to do with this is there it is. I've got this propane hose. It's not super thick, but if you can tell, it's kind of like a reinforced propane hose. It's got some, some sort of a reinforced material in the middle of it here. Let's, let's, see, let's chop this right here. Oh, let me get back here. I was kind of coming down. I was catching the edge of my log here. And I'm dropping everything. Let's 
do this a little better here. There it goes. Yeah, no problem. We had to come in and do like a push cut, get through this. Push cut right through it like that. Kind of cut this in half right now, push cutting it. Bam. There it is. Push cut right through there. So a little rubber hose, no problem. But let's see. Ooh, look, guys, I got this corrugated old uh, pull hose here. Let's see. Yep, cut through that, no problem. No problem, cut through that. Oop. Kind of push cut your way right down through that. No problem. So obviously that's, I mean, that's not super thick stuff, so it's not too bad. The good old nylon rope. So you guys know this stuff is rough on knife edges. Um, Here's a strand of it. I can't even remember how thick this is. Uh, this is three eighths thick uh, poly rope. Here's my roll I bought for this. Come in here. Cut through it. Ooh, man, this stuff makes a mess, though. Cut through it, no problem. Set that down. But what I wanted to do was not make a mess and I did, but that's all right. I do this for you guys. Put that down aside. This is about a four foot length that I kind of doubled over itself and taped it up on the end. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is right through here. This is eight pieces. Let's see if we can cut through this. Back. Ooh. Just about. Look at that. It's just barely hanging on through a couple of little strands right here. Oh, there goes some of it. Look at it. So just barely hanging on by little little strands right there. So I'll, through eight pieces, one kind of hit. Cut through it. Pretty much cut through it. Not bad. I bet you if I was standing up, I might have probably would have been able to get through that all the way. But don't like that stuff. It makes a mess. But that's all right. Now, one of the other things I've gotten to where I like to do is a piece of extension cord that I had the dog chewed through part of it. So now it's a sacrificial lamb. But just just pretty much a standard electrical cord. It's got you know your three stands. Uh, that are sheathed in copper wire inside of there. I like to, oh yeah, chopping them off right now. No problem. Bam, little chunks right there. Well, that's pretty, seems pretty simple for a knife this size. So let's bump it up a notch. I took four pieces of it, taped them all together like this. So you have four strands of wire here, essentially, what is it? Three, six, 12 all together with the smaller ones inside. Look at that. Right through it, no problem. That's pretty awesome. Let's check out this edge here. Got a little bit of the uh, the plastic material from the stuck on here, but wipes right off my finger. No edge damage. I don't see any. I don't see any rolling or chipping. Heck yeah, it still feels sharp as Heck, guys, that's pretty awesome. So one of the other things, what else would I like to do with these things? Of course, you go out to the woods and you need to make a fire. You might need to make a fire stick or a, a feather stick. So it's nice it has this generous finger choil. You can come up in here, choke up on it. Just start digging in, making your little fire stick. Now, again, I've never claimed to be an expert fire stick maker or a feather stick maker. Uh, I actually consider myself to be pretty sucky at it. Um, but I can make one, you know, that'll work. It's not the most pretty, you know, I'm not, you know, not like Mr. Eric Outer who can make some badass ones if you ever see his videos. But you can come in here, choke up, and easily make a fire stick. Let's, you know what? Let's say you have to cut that off. Let's see, we just give this one whack and get through this. This is a, what is this? Three quarters inch thick. Ooh, almost went about halfway through it there. 
think we can get through this, guys. Man, each one of those chops, you've seen it, went about halfway through. Now, I wasn't able to chop all the way cleanly through, but let's try it one more time. Oh, there it goes. It wasn't clean, super clean. Kind of broke off there, but this is the strongest piece of wood. But three-quarters inch thick rod, able to get through it pretty easily. No problem. But let's say you got an even thicker rod that you got to go through. So this is a wood dowel, obviously. So is that. Um, this is... What is this thing? Well, I lost my... Oh, there it is. I had a tag on here. This bad boy, um, you can't even see how thick it is because the, the tags wore off. But look at that. This is probably, what, good one and a half, maybe eh, about a one inch around, probably, maybe two inches. This is pine, according to the label. We're going to do some wackadoodles on this bad boy. Oh. Yeah, look at that. Went about halfway through it there. Hit it from the other side. That's what she said. Oh, there we go. A couple of hits. Bam, right through that. Hold on. Oh, yeah, that's pine. It smells like it. <laughs> Man, a bit deep. Yeah. And broke it off there. Bam. So we know we can get through that, no problem. If you're out camping, had to do that. Do some light limb hacking. But you may need to go even bigger and chop something even thicker. You may need to baton some wood down. And uh, we're going to do that, you know. Because a big thing a lot of people use with a knife, fire starting, right? Um, so let's get a baton stick here. Check this out. This is a seasoned piece of almond wood. This stuff is pretty damn hard once it gets dried out. Uh, makes excellent campfires, great for cooking on. Because it's hard, it burns for quite a while and it burns hot. But I mean, that's a thick boy right there, right? I mean, this is, you see there? Um, could you, uh, let's see, could you baton through something maybe thicker than this? I would say probably yes. Um, but one thing I always, I've been finding out while doing these videos is you always want to make sure you got a piece where you got, you can hit with your baton stick. Cause if you get it too big, you run out of real estate to hit the blade with, then, uh, it, you know, it just kind of doesn't work. Although I did see a trick. Hey, we might try that today too, but let's put this bad boy right here. I am going to have to stand up for this. So you can see my big fat belly, put the bun right here. Let's baton this bad boy. I don't know why I'm hitting that left-handed when I like to do this with my right. You can see my blade is kind of, when I'm hitting it, I'm tilting it, so I have to readjust it. But that happens pretty typically whenever I've been tumbling with. Yeah, right there. Check this out. Of course, you're going to have to split this down even more, right, for your fire. Bam, no problem. Let's do this one right here. Got a lot of food to cook, so we need a big fire, right? Of course, you're always going to want to make your kindling sticks. So you're going to have to process this stuff all the way down. Drop your baton stick while you're at it. And there it is. Keep dropping all my sticks, though. No problem, guys. Look. Let's check out this blade. See if we got any damage on here. So you got your typical kind of scuff marks from when you're batoning through wood like that, uh, which will probably come off pretty easily with like, like Wicked Clean or Wicked Wax. Woo. Blade still feels sharp, fellas. Don't feel any pitch damage there. Don't see any rolling or any chipping. Let's see here. Find a... 
Yep, still taking the hair off my arms. Just shave that spot right there. And that was utilizing the part that was pretty much sitting right on top of the wood as I baton through it. Top of the edge is all right. Our spine looks fine. Just got some, you know, wood wood markings on there that'll come off as well. One of the things, oh, you know what, this is something that I don't ever really do. So let's give this a try. A lot of people will utilize this 90 degree spine to do some, uh, make some wood shavings. Oh yeah. Yep. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that right there. It will shave, like make real fine shavings. Oh yeah, there it is. You see it really well there. So if you had to make some really fine shavings to help get your fire going, you could easily flip this knife around, do some scraping with it, no problem. Uh, if you had to come in and make yourself a, a tent steak, a tent steak or a vampire steak, kind of choke back on it a little bit and do some light chops here just to shave it down. Make yourself a nice. Vampire steak, as I like to call them. Because you never know, you know. A lot of weird stuff out there. Might be UFOs, might be Sasquatch, who knows. But, yep. Plus, well, also while you're doing this, keep all these little pieces and use that to make your fire, too. So, let's say you got it down there and you need to make some... Nice long shavings to make this a little bit more of an acute point. You could easily come in here and either do it from the regular hand or choke up. This actually feels really good if you utilize this finger choil. It definitely feels like there's a little bit more control than if you're holding towards the back. But come up here and you can easily come in here and slice off slivers and make yourself your nice little vampire steak if you needed to. Got that out of the way. Wow, I think that was all the testing uh, material I had. <laughs> but I mean, a lot of times, guys, when I do these videos, I'm, I'm kind of just use, utilizing, I don't know, stuff that, you know, every average day Joe would be using at home. Uh, I don't know if you'd be cutting through four strands of uh, extension cord, but I don't know. Who knows? Weird stuff happens. <laughs> I don't know. You might have to do that. <laughs> but man, this uh, this blade, guys, is, is pretty phenomenal. Um, it, this, this saber grind with this convex edge did not take any damage, uh, cutting through wire. Um, you know, you would expect it to maybe ding it a little bit or even dull it and it didn't, it's still sharp as hell. Um, there's a really nice, uh, 90 degree spine does a good job of shaving wood. Um, this finger choil gives you a lot of nice control. You choke up on it. That feels really good. Uh, you can actually choke back on it to do some, you know, like little whip chops if you needed to. Uh, the tip is acute. I mean, it didn't take any tip damage at all. Um, I mean, it's still straight as an arrow from batoning it through that wood. No issues there. And if, you know, if you're looking for a, a seven inch blade that kind of does a little bit of everything, <laughs> this is definitely probably a good choice. Um, you, you're going to be able to do quite a bit with this, uh, from light brush clearing to, uh, batoning wood for fires to cutting rope. Uh, I don't, I mean, really, I think, uh, unless it's something like that's needed for heavy chopper, like this is going to be able to fit your bill for just about, just about, let's get, <laughs> can't even spit it out. This is a good all around knife for the size. And uh, I mean, you're gonna be able to utilize it for camp chores. You're gonna be utilize it if a uh, uh, Sasquatch comes charging at you in the woods, you can pull it out and use it to keep them at bay until the uh, men in black come and swoop them up. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's, it's a good all around blade guys. You're gonna be able to do whatever you want with this for the most part. Um, very nice grip, very nice finish. Uh, Eric did a good job of designing this, and of course, Vic over at Work Tough did a killer job making this bad boy. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it.
this carnivore will be coming out August 4th. I'll put a link to Work Tough's website down in the description, as well as links to Eric Outer's uh, Outer Limitless pages. And uh, make sure you go pick yourself up one when they come out, because uh, I think it's definitely going to be worth it. Uh, I know I'm glad I had this thing. It's pretty awesome. I love it. Oh, man, I just love this handle. It's so awesome. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe. Stay sharp. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I am almost at 1,000 subscribers, so if you uh, have any friends that like knife review videos, please uh, shoot, them, uh, shoot them my way and have them subscribe to my channel. I'd love to hit 1,000. Uh, but, again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Stay safe. Stay sharp. And uh, let me get my little remote control so I can turn my video off. <laughs> stay safe. Stay sharp. Have a good one.